Hello everyone, welcome to uh, another update for Incubation Engineering ML Ops at GitLab. My name is Eduardo and today I'm going to give you an overview of how does GitLab Moto experiments look like in 15.10. What's the current status and where are we going from here? First of all, what is model experiment tracking? When you are creating machine learning models, a machine learning model has three main components that might define its behavior or the, its performance. The, co the code that is generated, that generated the model, the data that was, that it was used to train the model, and something we call hyperparameter or configurations that were passed on to this code and this training process. Each combination of code, data, and hyperparameters will generate a candidate. So a candidate is something that might become a model eventually. And a set of comparable candidates based on some specific performance metric or, uh, I don't know, use case is called an experiment. So it, if you change either the code, the data, or the hyperparameter, you're going to have a different candidate. And experiment tracking is a way to make sense of all these candidates as you generate across your training, across your iteration when you are evolving your model, across time as well. So it's it's a metadata uh, storage. It helps keep track of, of, of the evolution of our models. And why does it make like and why, how are we doing this in GitLab? So MLflow is great. MLflow is an open source library, uh, most most popular open source library for uh, ML experiment tracking. It's by Databricks. It has a really large database. It's a, it has a great library, client library. Uh, it's open source as well. But the issue here is that it doesn't provide uh, a lot of features that we expect uh, nowadays on the enterprise uh, world. So, for example, it doesn't provide user management. Um, if you have, uh, it, it makes it doesn't have an auto it makes you have to deploy yourself uh, and so on and so forth so what we do by having gitlab act, act as a backend for the mofo client is that we provide user management we already provide an artifact registry um, we and all of this with zero setup for data scientists i'm going to show you very quickly how this works so what we're doing here we're re-implementing mlflow backend into GitLab. So GitLab works as the backend for MLflow client. So I'm going to show how this works uh, right now with a uh, with a demo. So let's uh, minimize this over here. So on the right side here, you have a the code that is used to train a model. Uh, this is taken from MLflow uh, documentation. It's pretty simple. Uh, no, I didn't change much from the original. So the code is the same code that you would use just to, 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 to store your experiments into MLflow. And here I have a project that I just created. So first things first, I need to create a, uh, a access token so that MLflow can communicate. So I'm going to go over here in access token. I'm going to create demo token to, I don't know. It needs API and it needs write repository and it will create a token for me. So with this token, I can already start training and recording to GitLab. So over here, if I go into ML experiments, I will see that I have nothing. Uh, no experiments have been tracked yet. So I'm going to come over here. It's the same code that I use for MLflow and for GitLab. The code doesn't change at all. The only thing that changes is that now I have to pass two additional variables for the running. First of all is the token that I just created. And the other one is the ID of this project. In this case, 2020 is 22. So over here, I just pass this 22. Okay. And now I can go back into experiments and then apply. And then I can run and it will start creating this and saving. So I can already reload over here. I see that it already created the experiment without any changes to the code base at all. Uh, and you just, by just pointing the MLflow code to GitLab, uh, it already starts tracking into GitLab. So over here, I can already see 
that the candidates have been are being created. And moreover, if I go into artifacts, I can see uh, GitLab already stores the artifacts. It's automatically it automatically stores the model artifacts into GitLab. So you have the model, you have the requirements and everything. It uses GitLab package registry for this. Um, you also have over here. Uh, and yeah, this is the current state of this feature. If I go over here, I can see a little bit more about the candidate itself. So as soon as it compiles quickly. Uh, so it stores all of the metadata generated by, uh, by the MLflow client as well. So it stores the metrics and the parameters and everything that's needed. So going back to the presentation. Uh, so this is already available internally for GitLab uh, uh, for, for, for colleagues. For, and they already gave some feedback on this. So first of all, it solves a lot of the problem of management, of setting up, of, of, of user access to specific experiments or to specific models because it attaches to the project. So you can manage uh, the users that have access to a specific model or to a specific experiment based on users who have access to the project. So it makes it very straightforward. It also makes it very straightforward to store Artifacts, the user doesn't need to configure a bucket for, uh, for uh, MLflow or, or anything. Since it already uses the GitLab art, uh, package registry, so it makes it very straightforward. There's no setup necessary for the data scientist. It only needs to create a token and that's it. Um, but it, right now it only keeps track of it. It only keeps track of the candidates. It really need a model registry to bring this feature forward. So what users want is to manage their model lifecycle. So from creating an experiment and from coming, I'll talk about this a little bit soon, and making a uh, experiment becomes a become a model. And the third point of feedback is that right now it doesn't really help users recording the the information that this trainer generates. So imagine if this runs on GitLab CI. We can pull all of the information from the CI, from all the environmental variables, and cross-reference with the logs, with the user that triggered that one, with the MR that is running. So this is what we're going to do next. And going back, about the subject of experiment, of experiment tracking and model registry, model registry is different. They are very related, but they are different between one another. So model registry happens after the experiment. Experiment is at the create. When you're still creating your, your models, you're still uh, thinking about them and iterating, and a model registry happens when you're already deploying the model. So uh, you have an artifact they want to deploy. So experiment, a candidate can be promoted to a model version, which can then be served to an application. So a model registry closes the loop that experiment tracking creates. So experiment tracking is when you're iterating very early on, sometimes the, the code is not even on the data on the on the repository yet, and the model registry is uh, when you already have uh, usually a model that's trained through a CI pipeline passing all of the the, 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 the checks, and then uh, you want to serve this one. So they, are complement, they complement each other, they close the loop, uh, and this brings the, the, the solution to the, the, the users want. Um, so the difference between them is that the metrics, when you're tracking experiments, you care more about the model metrics, so area under the curve, precision recall, and when you're doing model registry, it's more on the usage metrics, so like, click-through rate, things like that. User-facing, like experiment tracking, experiments are not user-facing on the model registry they are. Uh, on experiment tracking, you create artifacts either locally or on an automated way, uh, like a CI and a model registry. You will likely, most likely just create on an automated one. 
And on this stage that we talk about DevOps stage, experiment tracking is on the create stage and model registry is more on the packaging stage. Um, so with this, we are at a point that it's usable and we are improving this. We, got, we are planning on releasing in the next few weeks this uh, as is for testing for to, to all users so they can have a, 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 a test on this uh, and it will be, you keep working on this. So uh, right at what I'm working now, what I'm going to be working on is, is, is consolidating artifact storage, um, make it more user friendly, making it better, uh, adding some basic features that are necessary like managing experiments and candidates, deleting, for example, it's not over there and afterwards horizontal features. So by horizontal features, I mean integrating across GitLab, integrating experiment tracking to the CI, to the Mars, and so on and so forth. That's what I had for today. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.